Shalom and welcome to another uh, Bible study as we continue to rightly divide the Word of God as a workman. Be not ashamed as we uh, test the Scriptures, study the Scriptures daily, prove the Scriptures. Uh, as we become uh, a workman uh, unto God, see, you know, when I talk to you about occupying, trading, he uses all of those uh, metaphors. He uses, uh, uh, but he's talk. He uses as trading, occupying, but their metaphors are things that refer to his scripture. Now, you know, if you're born of the Spirit, we have to be born of the Spirit, but you've got to understand mathematically uh, uh, or by the text, by the Scripture, the Spirit equals the Word, the Word equals the truth. For thy Spirit is truth, for thy Word is truth, for thy Word is the Spirit, see? So it, it, it equals, just like... Uh, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, see? The Spirit, the Word, the Truth, see? So, uh, and see, there when Paul tells us, uh, not the spiritual first, there in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, but the earthly, see? We first of the earthly and then of the spiritual. For this earthly or body of corruption, or a carnal, carnal nature, must put on, must put on, means necessary, it will put on uh, the spiritual body, uh, which is, now it, it's the spirit that quickens and gives life, makes alive, in other words, which is his word, see. So, we're in his word, his word is in us, that's, that would be in type of, uh, in Christ, Christ in us, see, because he is the word made flesh, amazing understanding, so welcome to all of you uh, YouTube uh, people that, that uh, search the YouTube and are interested in uh, the Messiah's word, uh, may God grant you uh, understanding and peace through his word. Uh, and I will, uh, I am going to try to answer uh, April's questions that she had uh, uh, had uh, replied to as we converse uh, these scriptures. I see from the things, April, that you wrote that God has uh, been dealing with your heart and you are redeeming the time. Uh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful to see people that are hungry, that are hungry for God's word. Uh, and and don't mind, <clears throat> you know, to be corrected. Because, see, in the elect of God, which is the body of Christ, uh, you know, a lot of times when you hear his word, even though you don't understand it or might not see the revelation of it, you don't cast it off, you know, you have a hunger for it. So that's the difference. Uh, those that hear the word and and uh, they don't shema the word, which means uh, hear and obey, they just hear it. And, and, and the Bible says, if you don't understand the mysteries, Christ said, the sacred secrets to the kingdom of heaven, Satan is there, once the word is sowed on your heart, Satan's there to pluck that word from you, and then he will sow his seed of deception. So that's why Christ said you've got the wheat and the tares. And of course, uh, God has to bring us to the knowledge, we have to be corrected, uh, as many as Christ loves there in Revelation he says, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, right now, repent. You know, so there again, repent also means to be corrected. And it means to uh, come to more wisdom and grow in a nation, uh, grow, grow in a grace and knowledge of Christ. And that's a continued work, people. We are continually corrected and we are continually growing. Those that are 
uh, seeking the word. And uh, so it's an amazing thing, and especially where we sit right now. On God's clock, uh, I've got a my phone. I don't know if my wife's got it, but I think you probably some of you seen on the internet where you can download the uh, Red Alert of Israel. is free, and my phone has been going off day and night because it records when there's a rocket released over there in Israel, and it will come through your iPhone or your phone and. Uh, the siren will go off. So it's about five sirens have went off in the last 20 minutes right before I've started to uh, to do this video. So she might have taken it. I hope she did so it won't go off while I'm trying to do the video. So uh, now let's get to uh, the study here. And I think that uh, April had asked about uh, Luke uh, 2136. Well, let's take a look at that, and hopefully um, the Lord will uh, shed some light on this through the Holy Spirit. So I will go to uh, Luke uh, 21:36. Okay, and I think the question was, and I think you said that you still look in or believe in uh, the pre-trib rapture, which is fine. It takes a lot of studying, and like I said, I didn't come to my uh, to start teaching uh, that until about three years ago, and I studied it for years because you have uh, you do have uh, a lot of scriptures that that seem to uh, lean out of way, and you have a lot of scriptures that go the other way, but the thing there again, I think when you come to see the resurrection of the dead or the first fruits, 144,000, uh, and how the 70 weeks of Daniel uh, <clears throat> will determine on thy people, which is southern Judah, which that's where it's all headed when the witnesses stand up to prophesy. Okay, now let's look at 2136. And, of course, this is a prophecy chapter in the Luke, Luke's gospel. <clears throat> uh, uh, let's see, t uh, 34, take heed to yourselves, at least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of life, and that day come up to you in unawares. In other words, uh, he's warning you all the time, uh, be on watch. And don't let any enticing words, don't let anything in today's uh, world, which, you know, is full of, of new technology and things of the flesh and pleasure. You can't turn the TV on without looking at all of them. I'm not really even talking about all of the, uh, the abomination that's according to the uh, sexual activity and, and all of that going on. I'm just talking about places in the world, you know, to go get away, go on this cruise, that cruise, uh, you know, all the things of the pleasure that is uh, appetizing to the flesh. In other words, uh, you know, we're, we're faced with this stuff every day. Uh, and so when you come out and be separate, now there again, I'm not saying you can't go somewhere, but there again, you, uh, you know, on vacation or whatever, but you got to see what, who you are. I mean, uh, are you going on vacation to, to uh, fellowship with the world, or are you going on vacation to witness the gospel of the kingdom of heaven? See, so there's because uh, you know our job is a continued thing. Now you know, uh, you know the more you grow now in the grace and knowledge, the more you mature. The word is in you constantly. See, it's the miracle. It's a it's a great miracle of God's spirit when He. Uh, breathes that in you and starts writing his Torah and his laws on your heart. Now, uh, we'll see that uh, he said, uh, uh, for as a snare it shall come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now, whenever you see this, uh, this phrase, all those that dwell on the earth, or dwell on the face of the earth, uh, that is, see, that's the opposite of us. 
if you can understand, because this is just a, this place is just a passing through for us. It's just a tabernacle. In other words, it's just temporary. You know, this old earthly body is just a tempor temporary tabernacle. It's just a shadow of the real, first the earthly, then the spiritual. So, but most people that dwell on earth, their whole thing is about where they live, you know, this, this, and their whole thinking is about their activities on the earth and what they're going to do and what makes them happy and what all of this, see, which is the normal reaction to the flesh. I mean, we were all born to that, so we all have that. That's why we have to be uh, called out, corrected. The soul has to come into a submission to the spirit. Then God puts the order. The order then is spirit, soul, and body. See, the soul is what uh, has to come in submission because we lost uh, being able to be led by the Spirit when Adam and Eve sinned. We lost that capability. That's why you got, you know, there's a new birth that comes. Uh, and that's the miracle of God, you see. Isn't it amazing? He created us or create Adam from the dust. And April, you are correct, and I will commend you. It looks like that you do understand what happens to you when you die. Uh, that's wonderful because that's one of Satan's greatest, still one of his greatest deceptions that he deceives uh, Christians with. He deceived Eve and the garden, said, go ahead and eat the fruit. Uh, you know you want to be like God, you'll know good and evil, and surely you're, you know, you're not going to die. You're going to be like God, so God doesn't die. Now, Satan knew what God said, but he just twisted it enough uh, to beguile her. Same thing. The bad shepherds do it every day. There again, it's not about our going. It's about his coming. It's about the resurrection. See, so I, I see where you put something in the reply there, which I you don't know how fortunate you are, uh, because that is one of the hardest things for uh, eyes to be open with because of what we've been taught for hundreds of years about uh, you know accepting Jesus and going to heaven. See that that way it keeps you off of the the realization of the power of God because they deny that power which is the resurrection from the dead. See, and that's Second Timothy third chapter. All right, now uh, so now we see here. Uh, for as a snare shall come upon all them that dwell on the earth. Well, see, uh, he's warned us that, but we're not supposed to be that company dwelling on the earth. We're supposed to be looking for his appearing, for the blessed hope, for the morning star that, morning star that rises in your heart as the word grows more and more. Uh, when Peter talks about that in Second Peter 3, to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Messiah, that word grow is actually a, a uh, biological term that, that actually means that's an organic term that actually actually in the Greek means just like you set out a plant or a tree and it grows and it keeps growing it's the same thing uh, to grow that see to grow in the spiritual understanding see of Christ see that's and grace of course grace is a uh, uh, the second part of grace that I've to talk to you about, which uh, most preachers only preach grace, unmerited favor, but grace teaches. It corrects, it chastises. See. So that's, um, you know, when you see that, when I show people that, they just, they, they love that because that adds to the understanding that grace is just not unmerited favor, which it is. But without his unmerited favor or without the second part of grace, how are we going to be corrected? Because, see, if he don't correct us, there is no grace. See, people got it there again. It's, you got the wisdom of man versus the wisdom of God, which we are to understand, not man's wisdom. So, see, without God's grace and mercy, he would not correct us because grace corrects it teaches it trains us up see in the way we should go see it's amazing see when you get the whole uh, perspective of his word okay now to the 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 uh scripture you were talking about watch 
therefore, and pray always that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come, pa come to pass and stand uh, before the Son of Man. Now, the, all right, now we notice in the order he's talking about things that are going to come to pass and that we may escape, we may be counted worthy to escape. Okay, let's see if we can dig into this just a little bit deeper here. Uh, the word worthy there comes from 2596, 515. It means to deem entirely deserving or to be counted a worthy. Well, let's see uh, how it's used in the New Testament or the New Covenant. Uh, it's used four times. Now, let's see where it's used the first time. Okay, this, this should help right here. But they which shall be counted worthy. Now, this is Christ talking to his disciples and the Sadducees. Uh, but they which shall be counted worthy to obtain that age and the resurrection from the dead. Neither marry or given in marriage. Uh, see. Now see, that's the first time it's used, April, and it's used in the context of the resurrection. See, you've heard me talk about uh, being counted worthy in the resurrection. See, that deserving. See. See, and now, now the next time it's used is where you're talking about here. Uh, watch therefore and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape all those things that come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Well, when will we stand before the Son of Man is when we meet him in the air. See. But see, here's something that might help too. When you when you talk about the rapture, you're actually in 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 reality the rapture is the resurrection. See, because the dead in Christ will rise; those that alive remain will be changed, and together they'll be caught up to meet him in the air. The caught up, harpizo means to be snatched out, that's the word, that's what they use for the word rapture, see. So the resurrection is, is the, is the uh, snatching out or caught up, the rapture, see. That if you, you know, it's kind of like uh, in resurrection is first fruits. We're a kind of first fruits, James 1.18. We are what the, the wheat harvest uh, the barley was the first fruits, and that's why Christ was raised on first fruits. He resurrected the 144,000 first fruits, which John tells you in Revelation 14 that they are the first fruits redeemed from the earth to, Elo to Elohim and the Lamb. So they were fully purchased, they were snatched out of the earth uh, to the throne of God. Now, the, now, now here, we're going to be snatched out just like they were, but the, the Bible don't say that we're snatched out to the throne of God. That's the third heaven. The Bible says we're snatched out to meet Christ in the air because he's descending from the throne. We're ascending and we meet in the air that we breathe right now, which is called the first heaven, what you can see out there. See, that's what you get. You see, you see, we're going to meet him, and and that's what Luke's saying that you're counted worthy to stand before him. Well, there's the only way you can stand before him in the meeting place is to be resurrected. That's why it's only used four times. So let me show you the other two times. I think this will help you a whole lot here. Okay, the other times Acts five forty one, and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his anoma, for his authority, for his shem, for his name, in other words. See, so to be persecuted or to suffer for Christ's name, uh, they, they felt they were counted worthy because they were being cursed, persecuted for Christ's name. See, persecution, uh, there again, uh, don't fear the man that can destroy the body, but fear uh, 
uh, God because he can uh, destroy both soul and body and Gehenna fire see uh, he's using that that was a garbage dump there in South Jerusalem where they burnt all of the thieves see would they just throw it it would be like they're cremating the body they just throw the the body where they burn all the garbage and stuff <clears throat> and so that's Gehenna. Gehenna is a beautiful valley over there now. That's, but he used that back in that context because there was a big garbage dump south of Jerusalem in Christ's day. Okay, so now, and, and then we'll look in uh, 2 Thessalonians 1.5, uh, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you might be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also are persecuted or suffer. Uh, that means in painful, feel, passion, suffer, vex. And of course, once you cast all these pagan holidays and once you start coming to the knowledge of Christ and you start moving and being separate from that, which most Christians are involved in that, then you will be targeted. You know, whether it's your family or whoever, you will be uh, because God is separating you. He's He's bonding the tares. Uh, that's his order. They're being bundled and he's putting his wheat in his barn. See, if you know it, he's not bundling his wheat because they're one body. But the tares are in bundles. Now, if I, if I want to explain that to you, you probably already understand what I'm talking about. Bundles, you know, you got this, you got, you got a bundle of, of them over here that have their doctrines. You got another bundle over here, if you get what I'm talking about, see. That's what Christ's talking about. You got bundles. He's bundling them here, there, and there. But the weed, he's not putting in bundles. They're one body. He's gathering them in his barn. They're his body, see. Amazing when you come to see what he's talking about. Then you can discern the spirits, whether it be of error or be of God. Okay, now, so here's the four ways it's used. But see how awesome it is? First time it's used. Christ is using that if we're found worthy to escape. Now, what are the things that's coming up on the earth? Well, a lot of people don't realize they think all of these wars have to happen and all this stuff has to happen before Christ comes. No, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and there is certain signs and things just like the sign of the Son of Man. It's going to take the full 70 weeks uh, for them to see Christ coming in the clouds with power and great glory. But what you got to see there, April, is that when you see that in Matthew 24, we're with him in those clouds because we're caught up to meet him in the clouds. They're going to see him coming in the clouds. So this great meeting place we're going to have is when the barley harvest, the 144 that are descended from heaven, the wheat harvest and those that are alive and remain are resurrected. Then we meet in the air. Now he is gathering his uh, elect. And so we meet in the air. Now, I think you said something. See if I can remember. Oh, yeah. You said something about that you felt like because he's gone to heaven to build. He said, I, I go away. Uh, for my father has uh, many rooms or uh, abodes that's in the Greek and I know it uses mansions uh, and so and I've gone to, play, gone to prepare a place for you that is true and this heavenly Jerusalem that is about 1500 miles by 1500 miles by 1500 miles straight up is the third heaven that's where God's at and that that is being built and is being prepared in heaven as he is building his body here through the spirit on earth. Okay. All right. So he's gone away to prepare a place for us. And then he says, if, 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 if I've gone away, I will come again and receive you. And what did he say? And when I receive you, uh, there you will be with me also. In other words, uh, 
when I receive you, there you will be with me. And evermore be with me, Paul says. Now let me ask you a question. See, he didn't say when I when I go away, I'm gonna be I'm gonna build a place for you. Then he says, but but I'm gonna come again. Uh, because if if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you that. So I'm going to come again and receive you. And there where I receive you is where you will be with me. Now, where is he going to receive us? In there. See. So now, now Paul says that, that the dead in Christ will rise. Those that are alive remain be changed. Then we go up as a assembly, because that's who we are, his body, he's head over. So we go up to meet him in the air. That's why he says, when I come back, I will receive you in the clouds, in the air. And then Paul says, we will evermore be with the Messiah. And he said, where I'm at, there you will be, see. But he didn't say the third heaven, because he's descending from the third heaven. You follow me? Now, the next time the Bible speaks of when he returns, uh, let me show you that where that is. When you look in Zechariah, you look in Zechariah, uh, the 14th chapter, because all things written in the prophets, too, concerning him, he has to fulfill literally fulfilled this is a not a figurative understanding this is a literal understanding so we see here in Zechariah uh, uh, Zechariah uh, well let's look in Zechariah 4 2 uh, well for 14 14 1 I didn't mean 4 14 1 Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. Exactly what is happening right now. All of the sentiment is going against Jerusalem, has been going against Jerusalem. Uh, they're getting all these rockets fired in there. So far, there had not been any really casualties in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, uh, Israel has hit Gaza, and there's 190 or so people dead, some kids and some <coughs> excuse me some uh, <coughs> excuse me some adults but look what the, the world is doing they are chastising Israel but see I saw see when you see all this you've got to understand this is prophecy being fulfilled right here I will gather all nations against her Jerusalem exactly what's happening now even the United States of America, people think we are our number one ally. But uh, uh, in God's wisdom, oh, we're, try we're trying to divide the land. That's why God's going to destroy America. Okay, so uh, all nations will come against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses raffled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go uh, forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Okay. Because this time, not like in 586, uh, when the Babylonians and Gentiles come in and, and took over and sent Israel into captivity 70 years, and not like in 70 AD, when God actually used the armies of Rome to completely destroy and decimate Israel, but it's still he's going to bring her to repentance, to judgment. Now, in me showing you this, now you ask the question about the times of the Gentiles. Great question. Wonderful question. See, a lot of people don't even catch that. you got a fullness of the Gentiles, you got a times of the Gentiles. Well, Okay, if I was to say to you, in recorded history of the scripture, uh, according to Israel, uh, when did when did the when did the times of the Gentiles over Israel start? Started in five eighty six, when Nebuchadnezzar went in and 
and took southern Judah. We're talking about Jerusalem now, see? It's the southern kingdom. Northern kingdom was dispersed 722 B.C. So about 586 is when uh, Nebuchadnezzar coming into, uh, which by the prophet Jeremiah told King Hezekiah and all of his so-called gurus, uh, but they was not the true prophet, uh, that to go to Babylon for 70 years, this is the will of the Lord. If you don't, you will die here. And, of course, uh, they were slaughtered big time. Temple was destroyed. And then they went in uh, uh, to Babylon for 70 years on judgment of 490 years because they caused the land to sin against God. So they wouldn't let the land lay uh, uh, at rest on its seventh year. They kept planting, planting because they wanted more money and more, more greed and all of that. So, but the point I'm saying is that started the times of the Gentiles. Now, right now, what does it say in Revelation 11, 3, uh, 11, 2? Uh, measure, 11, 1 is to measure the temple and those that worship therein, but on the outside of the court there, leave for it will be trotted down by the Gentiles uh, uh, for 42 months. So this is the time of the Gentiles that are trotting or coming over or persecuting. But see, God is bringing the Gentiles, all nations against Israel. These are the times of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles, Ephraim's seed will be the Melohagoyim, uh, which his seed eventually will become the fullness of the Gentiles. That's why God had to split the kingdom and send the five husbands in. See, that's why when Christ went to the woman at well, I hadn't really got into that, but that might be some more questions I'll be glad to answer for you because most people don't know who the five husbands are. They don't have any idea who they are, but that's, but that's you know, God's faithful. It's in his scripture. I can show you all that another time. But the point I'm saying is the times of the Gentiles, uh, here he's going to bring all nations against Jerusalem, and they're going to try it because, see, Zechariah's Zachary's prophecy right here fits, uh, fits with uh, Revelation 11.3. The two witnesses are prophesying while Jerusalem is being trotted down 42 months by the Gentiles. See that? She got a fullness of the Gentiles that hear the gospel. That's to all Gentile nations. But when the fullness comes in, that means you and I, uh, far off, have been alienated and separated from God and without his covenants and his promises. Now by the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, we have heard and believed and been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And now we're a witness of that. And now we, by being born again, the Spirit's been, the, the Torah, his words are being wrote up on our heart, and we are, are a witness of that. And, and so we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, waiting on our fully redemption, which is the resurrection. When we are fully redeemed, just like the first fruits, they were fully purchased from the earth. We've been given a down payment. Until the resurrection, or when you say in the rapture, rapture, resurrection, uh, until that takes place, then we will be fully redeemed. But where are we going to meet him? In the air. Not the third heaven. Now notice uh, what, what Zechariah is saying here. Notice, and I see, when we're, when we're able to escape all these things that are coming through the resurrection, not the persecution. Now, see, a lot of people don't understand. Uh, but see, what does he say? Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought the day of battle for them. See, a lot of people don't realize... Uh, God is going to rebuke and and destroy uh, many Christ many nations when He comes back. See, we're going to probably have at least seventy years. Of, there's going to be great devastation. Everything is not going to be cleared out in the three and a half year tribulation. He's gathering the nations. Babylon's going to fall, but you got many nations. Uh, you got many goat nations. Uh, I believe we go back in the days of Noah. We have 193 nations. And I believe Christ said in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. When he comes and when he's through, we'll be back to about 70 nations. Because that's the nations that come out of 
the confusion of Babel in Genesis 11 when he scattered because of Nimrod uh, and because they didn't want to listen to the mouthpiece of God upon the earth, which was Shem, uh, the second born of Noah, which got the blessing. He said, we don't want to listen to Noah no more. So they started uh, worshiping and going to a man, which was Nimrod, the great hunter, as they built the Tower of Babel, and God come down said, okay, I'm going to confuse your languages, and you will become 70 nations. Well, what you see, in, the, in here at the end, he's going to give us the pure language again, which I do believe the pure language will be his language. Hebrew, but it's his, we've yet to have got that. Even, uh, even when the Hebrew, if you got the paleo, you got the modern Hebrew, the, all of this, and it's still somewhat confusion. But he promises the pure language. Okay, now notice here. Then he'll go forth and fight against all nations, as he fought the day of battle. Now notice in, in verse four, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. That's tabernacles. There's three feasts that will be fulfilled. One of the trumpets is the resurrection, first day of the seventh month, but but the moon has got to give its sliver, it's got to give its light, and then the trumpet blows. We're trained, we're, we are uh, we are changed at the last trump, not on the last trumps. It's at right before when you look in Revelation 11, you'll see the witnesses are called up to heaven, and there's two more woes left, two more blasts left, and then the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of the Messiah. Uh, the Lord and the Messiah, and see everything's in order. See, that's why the 144,000 uh, Rachel's children, the third prophecy, Jeremiah 31, 17, and there's hope in the future, latter day Hebrew, latter days or latter uh, end of the age, that the children will come back to their own border. Tenth day of the seventh month, a day of atonement, is also in the correct season is the 50th jubilee year leviticus 25 and that's when all land goes back to its rightful owner isn't that unbelievable how true god's word is because it's still in the land of the enemy there but when god comes back and uh in that season and the resurrection of the day of atonement uh he's coming back to take over so we're going back in the land, in our land that was given to Abraham through Isaac and Jacob, which is much bigger than what they're fighting over there right now. It's huge. So all of that land would go back to his rightful owner, which belongs to the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, we've been grafted into Israel. So we also share in the covenants and the blessings and the promises of of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see how beautiful this is? Okay, so I just wanted to show you. So Christ is going to uh, sit his feet on the Mount of Olives. Now remember, he said, uh, I've gone away, but I'm going to come back and receive you. And where I'm at, there you will be also. So where is he going to receive us? In the air. And then the next time he says, He's going to sit his feet on the Mount of Olives. Well, think about it now. He said, wherever I'm at, I'll, there you will be also. Paul says, not only there you will be also, but you will evermore be with the Master. So when the Master goes to sit his feet on the Mount of Olives, that's when they say they see him coming in the clouds with power and great glory. The power there is the resurrection of the two harvest. See, remember when he told the Sadducees, I just read it, you don't know, the, you air in scripture and you don't know the dunamis, the power, the dynamite of God, which is the resurrection of the dead, see, which now, I mean, all that's been lost, see, because why, I mean, why would you really talk about the resurrection when you die, you go straight to heaven, see, but notice he did not say nothing about that, he says if you're counted worthy in the resurrection, the resurrection means to come to life after dying. You're dead. See, I know you know that, and that's why I'm saying I've seen that when you said that, and you don't know how fortunate you are because if you've got through that 
huge tradition and roadblock, uh, man, because most people hate that, because, you know, that's what that's what this sand, their sand is built on that, see, but their house is built on sand. But anyhow, all right, so I'm giving you this in perspective to see where he goes, we go. And, of course, this is to set up his kingdom and to rule for a thousand years. Now, so, all right, let's see. We talked about found worthy. The times of the Gentiles, I hope you understand that. That's when, when Jerusalem is being trotted down by Gentile nations or, or the enemies of Israel. And the fullness of the Gentiles, Paul speaking of, us being afar off and once a Gentile, but now made nigh by the blood of the Messiah, now we're grafted back in uh, to the commonwealth of the household of God. And so now we're partaker of all of the covenants and the blessings uh, of, of all, because God's never broke any of his five covenants. So we're in inheritance with all of that now, Shane, because of being born of the Spirit and now the Spirit righteous up and now we become the sons of God, which Christ calls us. If you are the son of God, that's also Anthropos, son, uh, woman. We are the sons of the resurrection. Isn't that amazing? Sons of the resurrection, because it's all about the resurrection. So, and that's soon to come. Now, all right, so let's see. We talked about uh found worthy i hope that helps because that word the first time it's used uh, christ mentions it about that you obtain or found worthy in the common resurrection and you will escape all these things that he's fixing to destroy uh you will escape all them not persecution but the wrath of the lamb no you will escape these things that are coming up on the earth okay all right now uh, let's see, and then, uh, now, okay, there was another one there, I think, in, uh, I see how much time, yeah, I've got enough time, all right, let me go, I think it was Philippians, the second chapter, that you were asking about, uh, let's see, uh, Philippians 2, okay, let's see, Uh, uh, okay, let's be the mind I'll show you. Uh, being found in fashion as a man himself and become obedient to death, even the death of the cross, Philippians 2 8. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Uh, that at the time of Yeshua or Jesus, at the time, when it's time, is an order, uh, that every knee should bow of things in heaven, uh, in the earth, and under the earth, and that every language, uh, or glossa, the word there is glossa, should confess that Yeshua, the Messiah, is master to the glory of Elohim the Father. Okay, or to Adonai. Okay, now, thank you for asking about, of course, everything in heaven, the resurrection of the, the 144,000, they're in heaven. Uh, his will is being done on earth too because we're being conformed to the image of the Son by being birthed through the Spirit and now that Spirit uh, which is his word is being rolled up on our fleshly tables of the heart or our understanding and they are the good works through Christ Jesus in other words we're being created in Christ which in Ephesians 2.10 as we are his workmanship being created in Christ unto good works which before or has been fitted up in advance that we should walk in, to, walk in them unto the glory, unto his glory, see. So, see, there again, when those uh, uh, 
many uh, that are not found worthy in the, in the resurrection and have to face the lake of fire. If you notice, uh, it, the devil, his angels, and all that listen to the uh, apostate teachings, uh, they will be have their part in the lake of fire, April. Uh, that's the white throne judgment. Uh, and they will be uh, judged according to their works, Paul. The devil, his angels, all are according to their works. You see, the devil is transformed into an angel like Christ. But see, he deceives by twisting the, the gospel, and that's why that's another gospel. Then that's because he's an unclean spirit, and then you've got uh, uh, the other gospel, the other Jesus, and then he's got ministers of righteousness, Paul says, that are like the apostles of Christ, and they are disguised preachers. Uh, there's, there's great deception, and they are all going to be judged according to their works. But see, when you're born again, when Paul reveals, see, uh, we are God's workmanship being created in Christ, you see. The miracle of the Spirit, you see. So we're being created uh, in Christ, uh, which 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 makes good works, God working in you to do the will of both his uh, will and pleasure. So it's God working in us to bring this about, see, and it's experiential works see, by the Spirit. This is the miracle, you know. Uh, and, and see, most people don't say that because when when you got when you got preachers say accept Jesus. Now, how can you accept something? Say, you know, I mean, uh, all of that cliche stuff. If you notice how, look how Peter brought the men of Israel to repentance. He did not say, you, oh, you men of Israel, that Christ died for you uh, and rose again. And I mean, you see, he didn't come up and just accept. No, he used the prophets and the Psalms to prove the resurrection of what David prophesied that Christ fulfilled, which they knew and they crucified. And so, uh, and then when he used Psalms 110 and said, you have crucified uh, David's master and your Messiah, uh, and they said, oh, "What, brethren? What must we do to get back in the graces of God?" He said, "Repent and be baptized and be baptized." See, and see, and then they were grafted back into Israel. Do you realize their branches? Those men of Israel were just like me and you. They were sinners. And Christ was the mediator to, to break down the wall of petition between a Jew and a, a Gentile. Now we're one new man in Christ. You see, all of that's been confused with all this other stuff, which I think you're coming to see. So I didn't mean to get on that, but it's hard for me not to go to these different places to prove because it's just hard, if you understand, because everything has one uh, true thread when, when you see how everything fits. And so now, so he's going to, every knee is going to bow in heaven, uh, angels, every, all creation, and everything on the earth and under the earth would be the, what you call the departed spirits, the unclean spirits. Now, now we're getting into something now, when Christ, when Christ cast out the unclean spirits out of the men there in the Gospels, you know, but if you notice there, there. When Christ was coming towards in one of the gospels, and you remember one of the unclean spirits or the devils, unclean spirits, it said, "Yahshua, are you coming to torment me before it's time?" I don't know if you've ever read that. Go, go look at that and see, because the unclean spirits, uh. They know who he is. They've always known because they, they are spirits. See, see, there again, you've got spirits that don't have bodies, Christ said. We're given a spiritual body just like he is. But he told them, touch me because uh, I have flesh and bone, no blood. 
but spirits don't have bodies because they were scared that he was some demon spirit when they first seen him there. And he said, what's the matter? What are you afraid of? And they thought he was some spirit. And he said, look, a, a spirit does not have a body. So, so, but I have a body of flesh and bone, I'm a, which we're going to have that same. We're not going to just be a spirit. Spirits have to endow. They, they, they have to, uh, uh, you know, they also go into people. Just like this unclean spirit was that Christ cast out of this man, he said, Yeshua, do you come to torment me before it's time? Because, you know, the unclean spirits know when are they going to be tormented when they're cast into the lake of fire. See, they know that because the lake of fire, God created for the Satan and his angels and the unclean spirits. See, so, so the point I'm saying, and there's three unclean spirits in the earth. Uh, uh, the spirit of the false prophet, the spirit of the beast, which is man, and the spirit, of course, of the Satan or Hasatan, the dragon. So, so you got three unclean spirits, and guess what? God's spirit is clean. You got the Father, the Son, and uh, the Holy Spirit, which is one. But what I'm saying is, it's the clean spirit. In other words, it's the true spirit. But you have to have three unclean spirits. See? See, uh, so uh, just like you've got preachers of the gospel of the kingdom, and then you've got bad shepherds and false shepherds, see, that preach the other gospel. That's why Paul reveals all the mystery of iniquity, see, which most Christians have no idea what that's about. So, so every everything is going to bow. Now, even when that devil or that unclean spirit said, you're not going to torment me yet, are you? And guess what Christ did? He said, allow me to go into the swine. Well, the swine's a picture of the apostate church. I don't want to get into that, but but uh, that's what that is. That's a picture of the apostate. And uh, so, or the apostate teaching. So, so where did that where did that uh, uh, unclean spirit go? He went in uh, to the swine because it was not time. God has got an order, uh, and everything has to be fulfilled, and He does not break His scripture. So Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years during the millennium, but it is necessary. He must be loosened for a short season. Because that is when the Father deals with his created cherubim that went bad, his angel, which was the highest rank. That's why the Father is going to take care of him, but not until it's time. And if you notice uh, in what's happening, that's going to happen in, right real, real close in this anti- Christ or this ones that stands in the place of Christ uh, if you notice Satan gives his power to the beast and the false prophet you notice the beast and the false prophet go into the lake of fire when Christ with his brightness coming and spirit his mouth destroys that okay but Satan don't go in the lake of fire till after the thousand years why because Satan gives his authority See, you got to see the mouth. He gives his authority to them. He, Satan's slick. See, so Satan does go in the pit for a thousand years, but he's got one more hurrah to go to the nations to come around the blood city, and that will also be guess what, April? That will also that will be the last time that the Gentiles have a threat against us or God's people and then that will end that's that completely and it will be for a very very short season and on the father only the father knows that not even the son that's what that's talking about a lot of people think it's talking about uh, what we know right now when the, before the Messiah comes but the Messiah has told us everything he said I've done told you all but 
the day or the hour, but he's given us the seasons, he's given us the signs, and if you're on watch, you will not be caught as a thief. But when he says, uh, my words, heaven and earth will pass away, he's talking about the new heavens and new earth, but my words will not pass away. And he says that right after he says, only the Father, not even the angels of the Son, no, but only the Father. Yes, it, but he's talking about future there. Uh, he's talking about after the thousand year reigns because he's given us everything. As I speak uh, to you, he has given us everything. Now, I, we don't know every little detail and who's going to kill who over there and and exactly who uh, is going to come to the forefront. But I'm, far, I'm, I'm saying as far as the full 70 weeks of Daniel, uh, we now know that Zechariah 12, 10 when, when Jerusalem and the inhabitants thereof mourn, that's after they, they've got to see the sign of the Son of Man right over their head, just like the rainbow was given as a sign or a covenant after the flood. So it's amazing. So, so that was the last part of the puzzle that I was praying and asking for. What is a sign? Because, uh, there's, there's, they're going to see the sign, not the Son of Man, His sign. What's His sign? What's His miracle? The resurrection of the dead. That's the first fruits. And see, they know when they see them, they know that He is the Savior, the Redeemer of Jacob. Because when they see them, all of the, the veil comes off, in other words. Then they will repent and mourn for the one they perished. That's, all, that's when they see the miracle. And isn't it amazing? You know, Christ said to the Jews, says, you Jews, you know, you always seek a sign or a miracle, and to the Greeks, they want wisdom. And guess what? God is going to give them the greatest miracle they've ever seen when they see the resurrection of 144,000 coming back to their own border to set up the kingdom with Christ. That's going to bring them to their knees. See? That's what you see. We're we're already bowing, and those in heaven, and then the, then they will. And guess what? All the spirits, the unclean spirits, uh, they will be cast into the lake of fire, and that they will understand who God is. They already know that's where they're going. But see, the, but their confession, they know who He is. And they believe all who he is. Uh, you know, they, even the uh, the Bible says even the devils believe, but they hadn't confessed. See, I mean, they believe. You know, there again, belief being a verb, of faith is a noun. But you know, so you, you know, there's works there in the verb. You know, shows action. They know who he is, uh, but. They're not, you know, like most people, their spirits or their souls are not following Christ either. Okay, I guess uh, I'm about out of time now, so I hope that this uh, helps some. And please uh, keep asking questions. And if there's something here I missed, and I'm sure there is, uh, because uh, we will continually uh, rightly divide his word for something I don't, no, or don't think I can help you with. I sure won't try to make up anything because if I can't see it or get it in Scripture, I'll just say, well, that gives, I'll just study until the Lord shows me something. So uh, don't hesitate at all or anybody out there that's hearing this because, see, this is what it's about. We're members of one another in the same spirit, people. And so there's only one spirit. And it's, we're members in the body, Christ being head over us, uh, so this is what we're supposed to be doing. Now may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness to your spirit and to the assemblies or whoever's hearing this, uh, as it rightly divides and brings us to the knowledge as we are being led by the spirit and, and we continue to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to reveal these things uh, in the name of our Savior and Lord and soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Amen.